So I received this email that was threatening me that they had compromising images of me in a vulnerable moment. I've been spying on you while you watch porn. That was fun. It's really scary. It's scary. Somebody is telling you that, look, I, I see what you're doing. I recently made a video of you. How big is the sextortion industry, would you say? It's close to 20% of all the spam we saw in one month was sextortion oriented. They generate a significant amount of revenue. Send me 1500 in Bitcoin. So what piece of sent me this email? The internet is not the problem. They're just using this new world to steal your money. It's the perfect crime. As clickbait headlines warp our view of the world, we're going down the rabbit hole to ask, how afraid should we really be? On this episode, webcam sextortion. A warning tonight, hackers can turn over your webcam and turn it against you, demanding nude photos or money. A hacker had sent Cassidy a link to malicious software that she had clicked on. That gave him access to her entire laptop, including the webcam. In between the news, that viral photo of Mark Zuckerberg, or that episode of Black Mirror, I'd become so freaked out that someone could hack my webcam that I started putting tape over the lens. With the endless amounts of digital meetings during the pandemic, however... Kind of a big deal for us. Sorry, Z, we can't, we can't see you. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I've got my tape on. I'd become somewhat complacent with my webcam protection. So I was absolutely terrified when I clicked on an email promising me a promotional opportunity that turned out to be this. Hi, I know password 6969 exclamation mark is your password. Unfortunately, I have some bad news for you. A few months ago, I put a Trojan horse on your machine which gives me access to your camera and microphone. I've been spying on you while you watch porn and recently made a video of you coming on one side of the screen with a video of you watching on the other side. That was fun. Send me 1500 in Bitcoin to my wallet in the next 48 hours or I'll send this to all your contacts. Don't mention this to anyone, otherwise I'll send the video. P.S. The time will start once you open this letter. My mind raced as I tried to figure this out. How do I send Bitcoin? Do I even have $1,500? Do I care if my mom sees my junk? Even though they said they were tracking my moves, I decided to risk public humiliation and copy paste the email's body in a search engine. I was relieved to find a fresh forum with multiple people writing that they had received the same email. But how could someone actually get access to my webcam if they wanted it? Through probably malware. The likely route to that would be probably start with a spam email that includes either a link or the payload itself, so a booby trap file that they entice you to run, which would then install the malware on your computer. That allows them to do all sorts of things. They can look at your file system, they can look at your browsing history, and on top of that, they can do things like control your webcam, turn it on, turn it off, uh, listen to the audio, without you knowing. How easy is it to find malware that can do this? There are advertisements specifically on the dark web and some of the dark web marketplaces where they're advertising things like key logging, right? So you put this on a computer, it gathers credentials, and then you can log into those accounts. Also, there's other programs that are meant to be more like these remote access Trojans, these rats, uh, where they can control or, or have visibility to the entirety of the device. Basically, there are a number of different ways for criminals to get access to a device through malware found online. But this seems like quite a bit of work for just one person. How feasible is a whole campaign based on this strategy? They would have to go through and access those computers and take the time to turn on the webcams at a time where they could find them in a compromising situation. That takes time. Criminals are lazy. There is a slight, you know, non-zero chance that you are the target of an actual uh, hack. The vast majority of these sextortion style scams are just that, they're scams. So hacking specific targets does happen, but this type of attack is a lot less frequent than it was a few years ago. And based on how many other people have received the same threat, I think I'm in the scam camp. So what piece of shit sent me this kind of email? Preying on my embarrassment and my fear, bluffing me for a handful of bucks. Can you see me? The sender's email was from a raw materials company in Hungary. This email had been spoofed. But how did this end up in my inbox? By spam bots. Yanni and his team from Checkpoint Research have been tracking these sextortion spam scams, which have resulted in $83 million in reported losses. Before they even think about sending the, the spam, they need to have an army of bots. Scammers might employ a botnet, 
a collection of computers that have been infected with malware that receive instructions from a command and control server. There are thousands and thousands of botnets and exponentially more infected computers that do whatever the botnet owner wants. Send a DDoS attack, click on advertisements, or send out spam emails, all without the computer user ever knowing. A single infected computer can send out 100,000 emails in a day. And in theory, it's possible that the sender of these spam emails could be anyone. By definition, the protocols, the standards for sending emails does not include a lot of authenticity issues. You can send emails on behalf of whoever you want to. And then it depends on the receiving side to check and validate. But in many cases, you can bypass those protections. How many botnets are there in the world? Really a lot. I would say anything between uh, thousands and uh, million um, of them. But I, I, I don't want it to be a doomsday. Uh, everything is okay. I, I use the internet 24-7. Uh, everything, is, everything is okay. But uh, yes, that is the internet and it's important to know. It was scary to see my password included in the email. How do cyber criminals get passwords for a spam campaign like this? Very, very easily. Personal information like emails and passwords can be leaked in data breaches. A simple search on haveibeenpwned.com shows data tied to my private email address has appeared in nine breaches. Information ranging from my physical address, phone number, password, and email could have been leaked online. It's pretty easy to find lists of email addresses from these breaches, known as leads, for sale on dark web marketplaces. But even out in plain view on the clear web, Cracker forums post combo lists sliced up portions of the main breach that have been repackaged consisting of email addresses and passwords. These leads and combo lists are precursor to a number of cybercrime schemes beyond spamming. Hackers can use lo-fi, easy to source software to automatically try out thousands of username and password logins in a process known as credential stuffing. A lot of people use the same password, especially on throwaway accounts. So even if the breach was from a few years ago, a hacker can try thousands of credentials from loyalty programs to streaming services to bank accounts in a matter of minutes. It's pretty easy to find stolen bank accounts worth thousands of dollars sold for a fraction of their value on encrypted messaging apps like Telegram. Easy money right out in the open. Looking at these other scams, I began to think about how lucrative this extortion scam can be. I tracked the Bitcoin address from my original email, and even though Bitcoin is anonymous, transactions are public. I saw two transactions totaling $3,000 hit this address, meaning two people had fallen victim to the scam, but it's possible it did bring in more. Each individual Bitcoin wallet can have multiple addresses associated with it. So it's difficult just by the address to determine how much money somebody has made off of a scam. Sean Gallagher and his team at Sophos have been following the money on scams like this for years. We saw a lot go into uh, criminal activities like carding, where you could purchase stolen credit card data, which could be easily more easily monetized than Bitcoin. A lot of it goes into exchanges. At that point, it becomes everybody's money who is in that exchange. And we can't really determine who is making what move with what Bitcoin. So what you're telling me is I probably won't be able to find the person who did this, right? Probably not. I would say you're highly unlikely to find the person behind this campaign. And that's, that's one of the reasons why uh, blockchain-based currencies are so popular in the criminal world. The anonymity provided by blockchain currencies has propped up an entire ecosystem of scams that Sean calls cyber grifting and originate in countries with lax cybercrime enforcement. These are all run by organizations and by, by individuals who live in countries where just doing that generates so much money for them relative to their local income that it's you know, there's no reason for them not to do it. After reaching out to some botnet owners on Telegram to ask how one might use their services. Hello, are you a botnet operator? What the fuck are you asking me about my job for? One explained to me that a scam like this doesn't even need a botnet, just a cracked email server. This isn't even worthy of my botnet. This is easy with a cracked SMTP. YouTube tutorials show just how easy it is to crack email servers using a specific protocol. Combo lists and easy to source software can once again be used to force access to these servers and allow a cyber criminal to send out spam messages, all without a trace. I doubt I'll ever find the person who tried to sextort me. It's one of the many scams that seem to pop up every day. 
We have all gotten those bogus emails from a certain Nigerian prince. This post, believe it or not, is a scam. The home is real, but the person advertising on Craigslist is not. We found some fraudulent activities under your name. On average, sextortion makes up about 4% of all the spam we save. 4.2% of all spam is a lot of spam. As far as a, a, a percentage of the overall cybercrime industry, it's minuscule. The amount of money that you get from such campaigns or from being a cyber criminal is usually much, much, much higher than being a pickpocket. The internet was designed to be an open highway of information. To be truly secure on the internet seems almost contradictory to its nature. While cyber criminals can still sextort someone through catfishing, and our connected homes have created more entryways for hackers, it's unlikely that someone can go through a webcam to record hundreds of other random people at just the right moment for a modest ransom. However, the fear of this scenario makes for a really good scam. We still do see a lot of remote access tools being pushed out out there, but we rarely see it used for webcam attacks anymore. But with so much malware and hacking knowledge in plain view on the clear web, it's more important than ever to stay safe online. So what can we do? Use password managers to create unique credentials. Keep your computer up to date. Use anti-malware protection. And for the love of God, don't download things from people you don't know. There's no secrets with me around, mate.